It's funny how one sentence can completely upend your life. I want a break. Those four words from my husband, Mark, started me on a roller coaster journey that I could never have anticipated. As I dove into a web of deception, betrayal, and cunning schemes, I realized that some games are far deadlier than they appear. Teaming up with my best friend, Jenna, we embarked on a mission that would not only test our wits, but the very fabric of our bonds. If you think you know about trust, revenge, and the dark corners of human nature, think again. My name is Amber, and this is the most unexpected chapter of my life. It was a chilly Sunday evening when my husband, Mark, looked up from his book and uttered those five words that would send my life into a whirlwind. I want a break, he murmured, barely audible. I thought I'd misheard him, so I paused the movie we were half watching. What did you say? I asked, my heart pounding in my chest. I'd expected a lot of things to come out of his mouth, but not that. He repeated it, clearer this time, avoiding my gaze. I said I want a break. The air in the room suddenly felt denser. My mind raced with a thousand thoughts. Why? What's wrong? Was it something I did? I wondered. Before I could even respond, he added, There's someone else. The world seemed to spin. Someone else? After 15 years of marriage, after countless memories, joys, and challenges we'd faced together, he was just... throwing it all away? What do you mean, someone else? I choked out, feeling the sting of tears, but I was determined not to cry. Not yet. He hesitated, took a deep breath, and then said, It's not what you think. It's not an affair. Confused and struggling to grasp the situation, I pressed on. Then what is it, Mark? What's going on? He sighed, seemingly conflicted. It's... it's Brad. Brad? As in Brad, his best friend from college? The same Brad who had been our wedding's best man? The one who'd come over for barbecues, birthdays, and every Super Bowl Sunday? My brain refused to connect the dots. Brad? What does he have to do with any of this? I asked, my voice shaking. Mark hesitated again, rubbing his temples. He... He approached me with an offer, an investment opportunity. It's high risk, but the rewards could set us up for life. I've taken our savings and invested them. Everything. I didn't want to tell you until I was sure it would pay off. I felt like the floor had disappeared beneath me. All our savings? The money we'd worked so hard for? Our dreams of traveling, of securing a future for our kids? It was all gone? And you need a break because... I pressed... I'm scared, he admitted. If it fails, I've ruined our future. I needed some time to see it through without the pressure of explaining daily updates. I thought, I thought it would be easier for both of us. I took a moment to absorb everything. The betrayal was immense, not just from Mark, but from Brad too. My world had been turned upside down and I was left reeling, not knowing where to turn. Then a thought crossed my mind. How can I be sure this isn't a scheme? That Brad isn't taking advantage of you? Mark looked pained. I trust him, he said simply. That's what you said about us, I retorted bitterly. A silence fell over the room, only interrupted by the soft hum of the heater. In my head, a plan was forming. I wouldn't stand by and watch as our life's savings disappeared into the abyss. If Brad had genuinely offered an investment... I would ensure that we got our money back, even if it meant playing a bit dirty. I thought about it long and hard. All right, Mark, I finally said, determination lacing my voice. Take your break, but know this, I will get to the bottom of this. If Brad is being honest, great. If not, he's going to regret ever crossing our path. With that, I started my mission. It was time for a little revenge, the type that was best served cold. I needed information and a plan. The first person that came to mind was my best friend, Jenna. She worked in the world of corporate investigations and had a knack for getting to the bottom of things. Plus, she'd been suspicious of Brad for years. The next day, over coffee, I spilled everything to Jenna. As I recounted the story, her eyes grew wider. I knew there was something off about him, she murmured. But don't worry, we've got this. With her resources and my determination, 
We began our investigation. We started by looking into the investment opportunity Brad had mentioned, a new tech startup aiming to revolutionize some segment of the digital world. On the surface, it seemed legitimate, but something felt off. Jenna managed to get a list of all the investors, and there among the names was a shock. Several of them were people who had been scammed in the past, people with a history of making poor financial decisions. It looked like Brad was preying on the vulnerable, using their trust to his advantage. But how was he benefiting? Jenna dug deeper and found that a mysterious offshore account was linked to the startup. Every time an investor put in money, a percentage was siphoned off to this account. The breadcrumbs were leading straight to Brad. I was livid, not just for Mark and me, but for all the innocent people Brad was taking advantage of. It was time to confront him. But Jenna had a different idea. Why not play him at his own game, she said, a mischievous glint in her eye. I was intrigued. Go on. Jenna's plan was genius. Using a pseudonym, she'd reach out to Brad, expressing interest in investing a substantial amount. The catch? She'd insist on meeting the team behind the startup and seeing the operations firsthand. Brad took the bait. Within days, we had an appointment set up at their office, which turned out to be a rented space in a high-rise downtown. Disguised and with hidden cameras, Jenna and I entered the building. We were led into a posh office where a visibly nervous Brad greeted us. He introduced us to the team, a group of young folks who looked just as uneasy. As Jenna questioned them, it became evident that they had been hired for the day. The more we prodded, the more the story unraveled. The prototype they showed us was nothing more than a generic app, and their business plan was filled with buzzwords and no real substance. Finally, unable to take it any longer, I confronted Brad. Removing my disguise, I watched as recognition, then panic, flashed in his eyes. I knew you were a scammer, Brad, I hissed, but I never thought you'd sink so low. Brad tried to bluster his way out, but with the evidence we had, it was game over. Jenna discreetly passed the footage to the authorities. As we left the building, I felt a weight lifting off my shoulders. But there was still one more thing to do. Tell Mark the truth about his best friend. Mark had retreated to his parents' house during this break. I hadn't spoken to him since that Sunday evening, but with everything I had discovered, it was time for a conversation. Driving to his parents' place felt like the longest journey of my life. The evening sun cast long shadows on the road, and my thoughts were a tumultuous whirlwind of anger, sadness, and resolve. When I arrived, Mark was on the porch. He looked drained, shadows under his eyes hinting at sleepless nights. As I approached, he stood up, and the weight of our shared history seemed to hang in the air. Before he could speak, I handed him a tablet, where Jenna had compiled all the evidence. Watch, I instructed. The color drained from his face as he realized the extent of Brad's deceit. The person he'd entrusted with our life savings was nothing more than a con artist. I... I can't believe it, he whispered. How did I fall for this? A myriad of emotions welled up inside me, but the overwhelming one was compassion. Yes, he had betrayed my trust by not consulting me, but he too was a victim. I took a deep breath. We're in this together, Mark. Always have been. Now let's figure out how to fix it. The following days were a whirlwind. The police, armed with the evidence Jenna and I had gathered, raided Brad's home. They found stacks of cash, falsified documents, and enough evidence to put him behind bars for a long time. The media caught wind of the story, dubbing Brad the trust betrayer. As for the other investors, they were grateful for my efforts in exposing the scam. Many had invested even more than Mark and were facing financial ruin. Together, we started a support group, navigating the legal quagmire and helping each other cope with the emotional fallout. The courts froze Brad's assets, and while it was a lengthy process, most of the investors got a portion of their money back. It wasn't everything, but it was a start. Mark and I, amidst all the chaos, started couples therapy. We delved into the issues that had led to that fateful decision, and slowly, the chasm between us began to close. Trust, once broken, is hard to mend, but we were both determined to rebuild. 
Just as life seemed to be finding some semblance of normality, there was a twist I hadn't seen coming. I received an anonymous letter in the mail. The handwriting was unfamiliar and shaky, but the message was clear. You think you've won, but this is just the beginning. Brad was a pawn in a bigger game. Be careful, or you might just lose everything. A cold shiver ran down my spine. Was this some cruel joke, or was there more to Brad's scheme than met the eye? I immediately called Jenna. We missed something, I said tersely. Over the next few days, Jenna and I dove deeper. Brad had been in contact with someone codenamed The Puppeteer. Through encrypted emails, they had communicated extensively. The Puppeteer was the brains behind the operation, while Brad was just the face of the scam. The more we dug, the darker things became. The Puppeteer was linked to various shady dealings worldwide. They had a reputation for being elusive and had never been caught. But why target me with that letter? It didn't make sense until Jenna made a shocking discovery. Remember that night at the high rise when we confronted Brad? She asked. I nodded. Well, there was someone else there, watching. Jenna showed me the footage from our hidden cameras. In the background, almost obscured by shadows, was a figure observing our confrontation. They left just before the police arrived. The realization was terrifying. The puppeteer had been close, watching every move. They knew who I was and where I lived. I think they're threatened by you, Jenna mused. You managed to disrupt one of their biggest schemes. They're scared. But I didn't feel powerful or triumphant. I felt exposed and vulnerable. With Jenna's contacts, we heightened our security. Cameras, alarms, and even a personal security detail. I felt like I was in a thriller movie, but this was no fiction. My life, and that of my family, was at stake. Then, a breakthrough. One of Jenna's contacts in the tech world managed to trace a transaction back to the puppeteer. It was a tiny slip on their part, but it was all we needed. We discovered their real identity. Clara Bennett, a former Wall Street genius who had turned rogue after a personal tragedy. With her intelligence and resources, she'd masterminded various schemes, defrauding innocent people of millions. Confronting her wouldn't be easy. She was careful, always two steps ahead, but Jenna had a plan. Jenna's plan was audacious. It involved playing Clara at her own game, using deceit and strategy. The only way to catch a snake is to become one, Jenna said cryptically. We started by leaking fake information about a supposed multi-million dollar investment opportunity. The bait was designed to be irresistible to Clara, a tech innovation that promised to disrupt the entire industry. Jenna had connections with a couple of actors who posed as the inventors, giving interviews and showcasing their invention. Sure enough, within days, we got a bite. An anonymous offer came in to buy out the technology. We arranged a meeting to discuss the deal. Given Clara's caution, we knew she'd send a representative, but we were prepared. The meeting was set in a lavish penthouse suite, wired with hidden cameras and microphones. I posed as the assistant to the inventors, while Jenna stayed behind the scenes, coordinating with our security team. A sharp-looking woman in her 30s, undoubtedly Clara's right hand, arrived to negotiate. She was skeptical and shrewd, asking detailed questions about the tech. Our actor friends played their part to perfection, convincing her of the opportunity. After hours of negotiation, we had a signed contract, and most importantly, a direct line of communication to Clara. The representative made a call right there, discussing terms and the significant numbers involved. Using voice recognition software, we confirmed our suspicion. Clara Bennett was on the other line. Over the next few days, we staged a series of accidents, causing delays and increasing the pressure on Clara. We wanted her to get involved personally. And then, the moment we had been waiting for. Clara requested a face-to-face -face meeting. She wanted to see the tech herself and finalize the deal. The location was a secluded mansion, one of Clara's many hideouts. With our security detail and local law enforcement hidden nearby, Jenna and I walked into the lion's den. The atmosphere was thick with tension as Clara, a tall, imposing woman with piercing eyes, greeted us. I have to say, I'm impressed, she began, her voice dripping with condescension. 
but did you really think you could fool me? For a moment, my heart sank. Had she seen through our ruse? But then Jenna stepped forward, pulling out the signed contract. Actually, Clara, we did. The room erupted into chaos. Clara's guards tried to intervene, but they were no match for our team. Within minutes, Clara was in cuffs, the weight of her many crimes finally catching up to her. The aftermath was intense. The media went wild over the story of Clara Bennett's capture. Mark and I appeared on numerous talk shows, telling our tale. Our bond, which had been so strained, grew stronger than ever. The threat of Clara and her schemes was finally over. And while the journey had been harrowing in the end, love and persistence had triumphed over deceit.